We've been in this series, Dear Church, a journey through the book of Galatians all summer long, and we'll uh, have some different things happening in August, some one-offs in our church in the park and some different things, so stay tuned. But last week, we talked about the freedom of the Holy Spirit having its full expression in our love for other people. How many you know if you're really, you're really free, come on, it's going to show to others? If you're really free, listen, people, other people are going to experience that freedom through God's love flowing through your life. The opportunity to please yourself uh, with that freedom, there are two choices. Opportunities, listen, that will always confront you. An opportunity to please yourself, as we've talked about, or an opportunity to please God. Listen, for those who live to please themselves, how many know they're operating by the flesh? But those who are pleasing God, they operate by faith. So we have a choice. As believers, are we going to operate by the flesh or are we going to operate by faith? You see, when we are born again, we have the privilege of having two natures. We have a sinful nature and we have a new nature. 2 Corinthians 5.17 says, if anyone be in Christ... He is a new creation. The old has passed away. Behold, all things have been made new. How many know that verse is easy to quote but hard to live? Because how many know that old man likes to get up out of that grave? And we've got to continue as we've been reading and learning from Paul. We've got to continue to put to death the old man. Why? So we can live free. Come on. And stay free in Christ. Romans 8.8 8 says those who are led, those who are in the flesh cannot please God. I showed you this weed. I drew up this diagram a couple of weeks ago. And if you're sowing into your old man or your sinful nature, the works in the law, the Jesus plus gospel, legalism, you're feeding that orphan spirit. You're in bondage to the flesh. How many know that leads to death? But Romans 8, 14 says, For all who are led by the Spirit are sons and daughters of God. How many sons and daughters do I have here this morning? You see, without faith, it's impossible to please God. So we have an opportunity. Or do we want to see weeds crop up in our life? Or do we want to be, come on, a tree of righteousness? If you could show the fruit-bearing tree for just a moment. Listen, when you are a fruit-bearing believer, your life is planted in grace and faith. And with grace and faith come the justification, the sanctification, and the adoption as children of God. And then we experience freedom in Christ, which flows from us as super, the supernatural life flows from us, and we begin to bear the fruit of the Spirit. Today, we're going to look at Galatians. We're going to finish up by looking at starting in Galatians 5 22 to 26, where we left off last week, and we're going to wrap up with Galatians 6, chapter 6, 7 through 10. But let's read it together. It says this But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. Against such things there is no law. And those who belong to Christ. How many of you belong to Christ? Come on. If you believe, come on. You are a child of God. And because you are a child of God, you belong. You belong to Christ. Jesus, you have crucified the flesh with its passions and desires. If we live by the Spirit... Let us keep in step with the Spirit. Let us not become conceited, provoking one another, envying one another. Galatians 6, 1 and 2, we're just going to skip around a little bit. Brothers, if anyone is caught in any transgression, everybody say, "Uh uh-oh. You who are spiritual, how many spiritual folks do I have in here this morning? You should restore him in a spirit of gentleness. 
Keep watch on yourself, lest you too be tempted. Bear one another's burdens and so fulfill the law of Christ. Verses 7 and 10, do not be deceived. God is not mocked. For whatever one sows, that will he also reap. For the one who sows to his own flesh will from the flesh reap corruption. But the one who sows to the Spirit will from the Spirit reap eternal life. How many know we don't have to wait till we get to heaven? Come on, to experience a little eternity on earth. And let us not grow weary of doing good, for in due season we will reap if we do not give up. So then, as we have an opportunity, let us do good to everyone. Listen to that. So then, as we have an opportunity, let us do good to everyone, especially to those who are the household of faith. I hope you're hearing the vision Come on, I hope you're hearing the vision of the house in that last verse. Listen to me again. As we have opportunity, let us do good. To, let us not withhold our leaders who could help revitalize and turn around a church in Lodi. Let us do good to everyone, especially to those who are the household of faith. How many know Lodi, come on, needs a little bit of what we're experiencing down there to see that place turned around? So let's pray together. Father, we pray in Jesus' name. Give us eyes to see, ears to hear, a heart to believe and receive all that you want to say and do in us and through us. In Jesus' name. And everybody said, today I want to talk to you about the harvest of a good life. The harvest of a good life. And one of the things that I have observed during my life as a believer is that a good life is obtained gradually, not instantly. Paul's mention of fruit indicates that life in the Spirit is something to be cultivated, not imparted or imputed. You see, up until this point, we've been talking about the things that come with the gift of salvation. How many are thankful that the gift of salvation is a free gift? Right? Paul says we can't earn it. There's nothing that you can do Come on, to earn God's love, nothing you can do, right? Because Jesus plus nothing equals everything. And up to this point, we've been looking at everything that is packaged in that free gift. Justification. Come on. Sanctification, adoption, freedom, grace, faith. But the fruit of the Spirit is different from receiving a gift. We all know that there are nine gifts of the Holy Spirit. We read about that in 1 Corinthians chapter 12. The, there's one Holy Spirit, but there's nine gifts that we have access to as believers. Paul just gets done talking about the works, W-R-O-R-K-S, plural, the works of the flesh. Remember those 15 things I talked about, and if your sin wasn't on the list, he covered it by saying, and things like these. Remember that. He gets done with that list, and then he says, but the fruit, singular, but the fruit of the Spirit, but the fruit of the Spirit is, and then he lists, love, joy, peace. There are nine gifts of the Holy Spirit, but there's one fruit of the Holy Spirit with nine qualities and traits. I call it a holy hybrid fruit. You guys ever had a hybrid fruit? You ever heard of a tangelo? Right? A tangelo is the combination of a tangerine and a pomelo. You know what a pomelo is? It's something like a grapefruit, right? So we've all tasted that. But there's things, I've, I looked this up, there's like 14 different types of hybrid fruits. There's a peacherine, cross between a peach and a nectarine. Uh, there's actually a pluary, a combination between a plum and a cherry. Come on, how you know you want to taste that one right there? But then there is only one fruit that actually is three in one. And I, I, I've never tasted one of these. Maybe you have. But it's called a peacotum. That don't even sound good. But it's a peacotum. It's a, cro- it's a hybrid of a peach, an apricot, and a plum. It's the only three in one fruit hybrid ever. And it's a mellow tasting fruit that has the texture of a 
peach, but it tastes more like a combination of an apricot and a plum. And some say it tastes like fruit punch. I'm mentioning all these things because you cannot separate out the qualities from the fruit of the Spirit. We just listed those nine, right? Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. All of those, right? You cannot separate out the qualities from the fruit of the Spirit. You get all of them in one fruit. In other words, you can't say, well, the Lord has given me the fruit of love, but he hasn't given me the fruit of joy. He's given me the fruit of joy, but I'm, I, I'm absent of that fruit of patience. You can't say that. Listen, when you, when you are a fruit bearer, believer, listen, you have one fruit, come on, with all nine qualities and traits with them. I take these one a day vitamins for men 50 plus. And I'm so thankful that they created, this is a brilliant invention because I can take one and it says right here, when I do, it takes care of my heart, my eyes, my blood, come on, my brain, and it gives me energy. And if you look on the back, there's all these vitamins in one thing. How many know, if I just ate vegetables, I'd just be better, right? Amen. What I want you to see is, listen, gifts can be imparted through believing and receiving in faith. They can be received by the laying off of hands, but you cannot impart fruit. We are enamored by operating in the gifts of the Spirit, but far too many have ignored cultivating the fruit of the Spirit. And how we know it's not just, it's not one or the other, it's both and. We need the gifts of the Spirit, listen, motivated by the fruit of the Spirit. This is what Paul said in 1 Corinthians. Listen, if you have not love, you are just a clanging symbol. Come on, how do you know we need the fruit backing up the gifts? As a believer, you can't believe and receive fruit. You can only bear fruit by making the choice to live and be led by the Holy Spirit. In other words... We, God is calling us to live free and stay free. So fruit is not a given. Bearing fruit is actually an outcome of freedom flowing in our lives because we've made a choice. What Paul said in Galatians 5, to crucify our sinful nature so we'll not gratify the desires of the flesh. And instead, come on, we're going to let that new man loose. We're going to let that new man inside of us free, and we're going to rely and cultivate a personal relationship with the Holy Spirit who produces a harvest of good things in our lives, not just for us, but for others. When I was younger and my grandfather was still living, my parents would send my sister and I to Louisiana for months at a time. And so every time we got there, we knew what we were going to do. We were going to haul hay, and we were going to pick peas. And every year, my grandfather planted a garden full of peas. And his grandchildren, all 10 of us, were pea pickers. And we'd each get a five-gallon bucket, and in the hot, humid Louisiana sun, we would fill those buckets. And can I just tell you, Those five-gallon buckets, when you were 10 and 11 and 12 years old, it felt like an eternity to fill those buckets. And we would would fill those buckets at the end, right before lunch, we'd get them all, we'd pour them all in, in the back of the truck, and then we'd go, and then we'd get to shell them. We'd get to shell the peas. Now, that's almost as fun as picking them. And then when we had them all shelled, My grandfather would jar them, not package them. We didn't have Ziplocs back then. He would put them in mason jars, and then he would distribute them to the the family. But then he would take them out to the community and feed and bless others. Listen, the harvest of a good life, listen, is not just for you to feed off of. It's for others to experience the good God in your life. You see, our culture is fixated on things in our life happening fast, quick, and in an accelerated pace. Boom! I myself believe that God can 
choose to do things swiftly. How many are thankful, come on, when God does something fast? But I also realize that most of the time, God's best for my life happens over time, not overnight. In fact, I looked this up. The average bearing age of fruit trees is as follows. An apple tree doesn't bear its first apple until four to five years after it's been planted. A cherry tree takes three to five years before you see that first cherry on the tree. A pear tree, four to five, four to six years in order to get that first pear. A plum tree, another three to five years. How many know some of us want to see fruit in our lives in the next three to five minutes? Right? The next four to five weeks. And if we don't see it for sure in the next four to five months, I'm out. And what happens is, because we want it fast, we overlook the truths of the kingdom that require faithfulness to his promises before we experience the fullness of his promises. You see, some of us want to see fruit in our lives, and God is developing the root system, come on, so you can experience fruit. You're so focused on what you see above the ground But God is working on what no one can see below the surface. And this is why we've been taking time in our services. It's so important, listen, that we just don't don't blow by that list of things that can quench the spirit that we showed last week. Those 15 works of the flesh. And it goes beyond that. How many know that list is longer than 15? And it's so important, listen, that we just don't skip over those things, but we take time to examine our heart, to examine our lives, because God wants you and I to experience the harvest of a good life. The fruit of the Spirit is proof that our lives are deeply rooted in the soil of sonship. Remember, it's the revelation That I am God's favorite. That you are God's favorite. God doesn't have a top five, a top ten, a top 25. Listen, he looks out at all of us and he says, they're my favorite. He looks at the church down the street and he goes, they're my favorite. He looks at the church across the street. He says, they're my, we're all God's favorite kids. Therefore, I begin to live a life that is led by the Spirit And when people experience me, listen, they get a taste of the fruit that I'm bearing. They get a taste of heaven on earth through my life. If you remember last week, again, we Paul says that the works of the flesh is evident. It's obvious. But he says the fruit of the Spirit is just as obvious too. You see, when you are living connected to other people connected to community, your life, come on, is being cultivated. You never wonder why someone put somebody in your life that you didn't get along with? Come on, how do you know he was working something in your life? Listen, you have a little disagreement with your spouse. How do you know he's, he, God is cultivating something in your life? Maybe a BFF, come on, that went bad. Listen, God is cultivating something. A coworker, listen, that maybe you, you don't see eye to eye with anymore. God is cultivating, come on, so that you'll be a fruit-bearing believer. In fact, I just want to mention this. August 16th, if you'd like to continue to help us facilitate and build community here at Real Life Church, and maybe you're attending a group, Maybe you're not, you want to lead a group, we're going to have a facilitator's training on Wednesday night, August 16th. You can get all that information online. But Paul says, the fruit of the Spirit, he says, is love. Let's look at some of these definitions. Love is to serve a person for their good and intrinsic value, not for what the person can bring you. Joy is a delight in God for the sheer beauty and worth of who he is. How many of you felt the joy of the Lord this morning in worship? Listen, just because he is who he says he is, peace, a confidence, and rest in the wisdom and control of God rather than your own, patience, and ability to face trouble without blowing up, 
How many ever blew up before? <laughs> or attacking or criticizing someone. Kindness and ability to serve others practically in a way which makes me vulnerable, which comes from having a deep inner security. What's Paul saying? He's saying, listen, when you are kind, listen, you are being vulnerable, but it's also flowing from a place, listen, of sonship and daughterhood. You know who you are. Nothing is beneath you. Nothing is below you because you belong to God's family. Goodness, being the same person in every situation rather than a phony or a hypocrite. Faithfulness, to be utterly reliable and true to your word. Gentleness, I love this one. Humility, and I've never heard these, this phrase, self-forgetfulness. Self-forgetfulness. I love what C.S. Lewis said, he said, humility is not thinking less of yourself, it's thinking of yourself less. And then self-control, the ability to pursue the important over the urgent, ooh, rather than to be always impulsive or uncontrolled. You see, we have a freedom in Christ to choose fruit over the flesh every time. See, you have been set free so that you can live free and not only live free, stay free. In other words, you can pray for love, but as a child of God, you have to understand, you, Ephesians says that we've already been planted and rooted in love. In other words, you're already tapped into the source. God is love. So instead of praying for something you already have access to, come on, your roots are deep down in God's love. Instead of praying for something you already have access to, you have to make a choice to start practicing it. In other words, stop praying for it and start practicing it. It's already in you. You can't separate it out. It's already in you. You already have love. You already have joy. You already have peace. You already have patience. You already have kindness. You already have faithfulness. You already have gentleness. You already have self-control. You have everything you need to live for God. You see, the greatest satisfaction in life comes from being a fruit-bearing believer. Secondly, a good life is cultivated in healthy community. At the end of chapter 5, Paul says this. Here's the fruit of the Spirit. And then in verse 26 says, he says, let us not become conceited. Come on, how do you know you can get proud of your fruit? Glory to God. <laughs> Hallelujah. Look at this beautiful church that I've built. How do you know that's not true? Come on. A good life is cultivated in healthy community. And Paul is saying, listen, here, are the, here is the fruit of the Spirit. Don't become conceited because you're bearing fruit. Don't provoke one another and don't envy one another. How many know healthy community is not an absence of conflict? It's a product of how we handle conflict. Healthy community is not an absence of problems. It's how we handle those problems. Healthy community is not about everyone being healthy all the time. Hello. Come on, how many know there, there are folks in here, listen, you might be heart sick. You might not be physically sick, but you might be heart sick. You might be hurting here this morning. Not everybody that walks in the building is having a good morning. I remember just a few months, uh, uh, about a year ago, I walked in to Jackson. I seen someone from our church and... I said, hey, how are you doing? Person looked at me and said, horrible. That's not what I was expecting to hear. Not everybody is having a good day. And Paul says, if you fail to keep up with the Spirit, you're going to have to put up with attitudes that influence your community in a negative way. So if we don't keep in step with the Spirit, if we don't keep up with the Spirit, come on, we're going to have to put up with some attitudes of negativity. Conceit is a deep insecurity 
leading to a need to prove our worth to ourselves and comparing ourselves with others. In other words, we're not, we're not acting as sons and daughters. We're actually acting like slaves. It creates an unhealthy environment where people are self-absorbed in feeling superior or inferior to others. How do you know God wants us to thrive in a healthy environment? And Paul says, not so with you. Galatians 6, 1 to 2, he says, Brothers, if anyone is caught in any transgression, you who are spiritual should restore him in a spirit of gentleness. Listen, we are living in the spirit of an age. Listen, we're... When, when leaders fall and ministers fall and pastors fall, listen, the media likes to ridicule them. And if we're not careful as believers, listen, we'll be rooting the media on as they make a spectacle of them. But how do you know our hearts should break? Listen, our hearts should break for people who will fall, for people who go astray. And I'm so excited to announce this morning, listen, this church Next week, I will give $18,000 to the sinner, listen, that restores pastors and leaders, listen, who have fallen, who have made mistakes. We're only $7,000 short, but next week, I'm taking $18,000 as we go to Green Bay, and I'm saying, listen, we're investing in leaders who are broken, athletes who are broken, pastors who are broken, boom. Boom. You see, being spiritual just means that bearing the fruit of the Spirit is a natural thing to do. Paul says, keep watch on yourself, lest you too be tempted. Bear one another's burdens. Everybody say that. Bear one another's burdens. And so fulfill the law of Christ. What's the law of Christ? Love God. Come on, love your neighbor. So how do we do that? Practically, bear one another's burdens burdens. By how? Restoring people in a spirit of gentleness, those who have fallen into transgression. That word restore is a word picture of putting a dislocated bone back in place. Now, Amy has dislocated her shoulder three times throughout her life. The third time Amy dislocated her shoulder, Josiah was just a newborn, and she was driving our new, come on, cherry red Ford Star, Ford Windstar minivan, and she pulled up to the stoplight, and Josiah had dropped his ball on the floor and was crying. And so she reached back to get the ball and give it back to him, and when she reached back, she sneezed, and out came her shoulder. Now, if it was me, and back then you didn't have cell phones, I would have just put on the four-way flashers till somebody came and held me. <laughs> Amy managed to drive all the way to the church office, and when they, she got there, she, the, 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 the secretary, Amy needs you to take her to emergency. She has dislocated her shoulder. We went to Kaiser there in Santa Rosa. I remember sitting in the ER, and the doctor came over, and Amy's shoulder was hanging down here, and he went to put hand, and I turned away. <laughs> I didn't hear a peep. I didn't hear anything. I'm sure it hurt, but he gently put it back into place. Maybe today you are here, and you've been dislocated from the body of Christ. Maybe you feel like today, listen, you are out of place. Maybe it's been a minute since you've been to church. Maybe you've been discouraged by the way you've been handled. But could it be that God brought you to this place to put things back in place for you? Listen, can I just tell you, it's not going to be pain-free. Listen, you're going to have to get yourself in the right people's hands that will care for you and be gentle with you and be kind to you and love on you and laugh when you're laughing and cry when you're crying. But you're going to need somebody in your life, listen, who will restore you gently back into your rightful place in God. Verse 2, bear one another's burdens and so fulfill the law of Christ. Someone once said, burdens become light. When it's shared. We have such a problem in the church. Listen, sharing those things that are weighing us down. 
We're absolutely seeing a move of God on Monday night among our men. Listen, men at real life, they're getting vulnerable. They're getting real. They're getting raw. Listen, and it's just beginning, but listen, people are being honest with what they're struggling with. They're being honest with where they're at. They're being honest with things that have held them captive for years. And you know what's happening? People are getting set free. Come on, men are starting to live free, and men are going to stay free in Jesus' name. You're going to be seeing fruit-bearing men walking around real life. You might be saying, Pastor Dean, I've got enough burdens of my own. I can't take on anybody else's burden. How many of you ever been there? But the burden you help someone with in a difficult season could be the very thing that causes you to bear fruit. And I believe Paul knew that a burden bearer was a fruit bearer. And it leads me to the last thing that I want to say today, and it's this, a good life is harvested by those who don't give up. Galatians 6, 7 through 10. It's a familiar passage. We like to cherry pick verse 9. But he says this, Do not be deceived. God is not mocked. For whatever one sows, that will he also reap. For the one who sows to his own flesh will from the flesh reap corruption, but the one who sows to the Spirit will from the Spirit reap eternal corruption. Life, and I need our worship team to come. Let us not grow weary of doing good. Let me just say that again. And let us not grow weary. Let's say it together. And let us not grow weary, for in due season we will reap if we do not give up. So then, as we have an opportunity, let us do good to everyone and especially to those who are of the household of faith. You see, many of us want a good life. How many want a good life? We want a good job, making good money. Anybody? We want a good marriage with all the good things that come with it. We want a good home in a good neighborhood. Amen. Pastor Jesse just purchased a new home. Hallelujah. We want good kids with good grades, a good attitude. (laughs) We want a good church with a good pastor filled with only good people, with good worship, good youth ministry, and good kids ministry, and good adult ministries, and good small. We want a good life. But what if I told you the good you harvest in life is actually determined by the good seed you sow in life? You see, a lot of people will look at Pastor Damien and Pastor Jesse. They'll look at pastors because a lot of times we're in front of you guys the most. And we're like, man, I I just want to be like them. I just want to, I just wish I had it good like them. Anybody ever compared yourself to somebody that you just like? I wish I was like them. And what what you don't realize, listen, they're living in a harvest they sowed way back in their 20s. They're living in a harvest, listen, that they sowed seed in their 30s. The good you harvest in life is actually determined by the good seed you sow in life. You will never harvest a good life with your hands closed. And just to bring you some relief, I'm not talking about money and either is Paul. You can take this principle and apply it to money, but Paul is not talking about money. He's talking about the good things that we can do as believers to others. You'll never harvest a good life with your hands closed. Well, if I just have more time, when when I get more time, I'll start serving. When I get more time, I'll do that. When I... When I get more money, I'll do that. When I do, when I, I Proverbs eleven twenty four. There is one who scatters yet increases more, and there is one who withholds more than is right, but it leads to poverty. You see, we have an opportunity, church. Listen, to be fruit bearers or bankrupt believers. Are we going to live 
Listen, with our hands wide open, scattering love, scattering joy, scattering peace, scattering patience, scattering kindness, scattering faithfulness, scattering gentleness, scattering self-control. Are we going to live lives, listen, with our hands close to our chest until we feel like, listen, we can give it? You'll never harvest a good life without sowing good seed. How many know what you put in the ground is going to spring forth? You'll never harvest a good life without sowing it into good ground. The Bible says in 1 Corinthians 3, 9, that our lives are a field. How many know we have two fields? We have a field in the sinful nature, which is supposed to be crucified, come on, It's supposed to be crucified and dead, and we have, come on, a field of the new creation. What seed are you sowing, and what field are you sowing into? What we plant in the field is what we will eventually harvest in due time. Everybody say, due time. See, a lot of times we'll we'll sow to the sinful nature because it's quick, it's fast. Listen, it it, it medicates a need. It, It medicates our brokenness, but yet if I'll take time to plant it over here and I'll cultivate it and I'll get in community and I'll live my life cultivating a relationship with the Holy Spirit. Listen, you might not see it overnight, but over time, you're going to begin to see fruit spring forth in your life. You'll never harvest a good life without the temptation to give up. You see, many of you feel like giving up today. It says, let us not grow weary. It has nothing to do with you being physically tired. Did you know that? I've heard this so many times. Oh, Lord, let me not grow weary of doing good. It has nothing to do with you being physically tired. It has to do with you not getting tired of making the choice that brings freedom to others and lifts the burdens of others by doing what's loving, what's joyful, what's peaceful, being kind, being patient, being good, being faithful, being gentle, and being self-controlled. He said, let us not grow weary of doing good, for in due season we are going to reap if we do not give up. Turn to your neighbor and say, don't give up. See, some of you here this morning under the sound of my voice, and you're saying, I'm so tired of giving and giving and giving and giving and giving and giving. How do you know in due time? Come on, in due time, you'll reap a harvest if you do not give up. And then lastly, and what I want to challenge you with is this. You will never harvest a good life if you're not good to others. Verse 10, so then as we have opportunity, let us do good to everyone. Everybody say everyone. And especially to those who are, the, who are of the household of faith. Come on, with every head bowed and every eye closed. Today, maybe you've been sowing in the wrong field. And you're not reaping the good things that God has for you. You're reaping the bad things of poor decisions. You already have love. You already have joy. You already, come on, have peace. You already have patience. How many know we have everything that we have need of? Will you stand with me today? Thank you again for joining us. We pray that message ministered to your heart and lifted your spirit today. Hey, to find out more about joining the RLC online family, you can find us on the Church Center app. You can also subscribe to the YouTube channel if you haven't and follow us on Instagram and Facebook. God bless you.